Hello and welcome to another episode of Learn with Jabe. I'm Jabe Jabelson, and this week we are going to learn how to use Python with the unofficial ESPN Fantasy Football API. That's right, a step by step guide to build an ESPN Fantasy Football draft tool with Python, Pandas, and Google Sheets. Now, if you're like me, you take fantasy football way too seriously, which means you're always looking to get a leg up on the rest of the league. Well, I can't help you win your league, but I can help put you into a position to win your draft. That's right. We are going to go deep into some draft history, pull out that data from ESPN, put it into a Pandas data frame, and try and pull out any you know kind of insights or patterns or, or various things we've seen on how your league drafts over the years. For the most part, we'll dump it into an historical CSV file, put that into Google Sheets, use a pivot table, and get a sense for the average count of you positions drafted for each pick over the years. Once you have that, do with it as you please. Now, as far as requirements go, you need to have an ESPN Fantasy Football League, ideally with multiple years of draft history. You're going to need Python. You're going to need pandas, good old trusty pandas, and you're going to need a Google Sheets. I'm going to walk through everything in a Jupyter Notebook. I'll link out to my GitHub repo as always, and I'll make sure to link to my blog post if you'd rather follow along in text form. So without further ado, bon appétit. All right, to get started, you need to log into your ESPN Fantasy League, and you'll see you have this history tab, which is super handy. And within that, there's a draft recap, which has all of the information when it loads, broken down by round or by team. And you see we have any of the previous seasons. So this is the information we're after, and obviously it's coming from somewhere, and our goal is to find out where that's coming from, connect to it directly, make a request, and save it down to a pandas data frame. So let's use the handy dandy uh, developer tools and right click inspect this page. And if you go over to the network tab, you'll see here, uh, let's refresh this page and let's apply a filter. We'll write and draft in here. If we click into this and we go to the preview, we see this draft detail which has the picks, which have uh, the 204 picks. The math checks out in a 17 round draft for a 12 team league, we should have 204 picks. Within each of these picks, it contains information such as the overall pick number, the player ID selected, and the team ID who made the pick. Fantastic, that is gonna be all the information we need. And so again, let's head over to the headers. And here we'll see this request URL. This is basically the get request being made to the V3 of the API, which is returning the draft detail um, with the certain view. And again, this response, if we make it pretty, this response is everything we want and need, which we will save into our pandas uh, data frame and then access it and have a lot of fun with it. So if we copy that URL, what we can do is head over into our Jupyter Notebook. And I'll be running through everything in the Jupyter Notebook to make things easier so we can see cell by cell. Um, I basically pasted in this um, URL that we just had. Now, one thing to call out is if you actually, if you go to a previous season before 2018, so this 2016, um, we're going to make this new request, and you'll see here it comes in. Let's click into it. It's a slightly different URL. It's using more of a historical one with the league history. Um, so this is actually the one we're going to use because it works beyond 2018 and for the recent ones. There are some slight differences in the response uh, as far as what's nested, but we'll get into that more later. So you see here I pasted in this URL. And what we're going to do is actually use the string.format method, and we're going to take out where the season ID was, which was that 2021 or the 2016. We're going to replace it with curly braces, 
and we're gonna use the dot format and pass in the season ID, which we'll define here as 2021. This is gonna allow us to use it uh, for for loop or kind of swap in and out the season ID later on. And then we'll do the same thing for the other variable, the league ID, which is specific to your fantasy league. And again, you could probably see this up top in this league ID, also the season ID of what you're looking at. And that is what we're gonna kind of replace with the curly braces. And again, add it to the dot string format, but this time making sure we pass in league ID first and season ID since those come in sequential order. Um, great, so let's actually run this. Okay, moving on next, we are gonna use our pandas in our request library, which we will import here. Again, you can pip install those if you don't have them already. Um, and like I said before, we have this URL which we are gonna save into a URL variable, pass in the format, uh, the string format. And now, since my league's private, and most leagues are, we need two more pieces of information. We need these uh, cookies to kind of basically tell ESPN that I am authorizing uh, this call to access this private lead. So where you can find these is if you actually head back over into that network tab, and um, you look down here into the request headers, you'll have this big cookies. Uh, section and within it you can get that SWID um, and then you'll also find the ESPN2 uh, somewhere in here. Uh, it's, a, it's a lot of information. Again, if you're logged in, uh, this is included in the header to, to tell ESPN that you can access this private league. So you need to get both those and we'll save them into this dictionary passing in this SWID, as well as the ESPN S2, which is gonna be this long uh, string of text. So we'll pass those into a variable called ESPN cookies, which we'll include in our request call. And we're also gonna pass in headers. Uh, here, pretty basic, basically telling it, um, providing everything it needs for the get request. We'll run this as well. Um, and again, we already had these saved, but let's just run it again for uh, simplicity's sake. And what we are going to do now is this request uh, dot get call, which will pass in the URL, we'll pass in the headers, and we'll pass in cookies, which we saved into the ESPN cookies. And we are going to get that JSON data from the response and save it into an ESPN raw data variable. So we'll run this. It looks like it was successful. And then if we print this, we'll see here we have all of this ESPN raw data, which Again, if we go back to this response, matches up very, very uh, nicely um, here. Fantastic. So the catch is we don't want all of this information. We actually want the pick information, which is nested within the draft detail. Uh, and because we use the historical API call, we actually have to use this fancy uh, zero index to, to call uh, the first list we're saying go into here first then go into the draft detail then go into the picks and save all of this information um, into a new variable now if we didn't have that historical api call but we use the more recent one you you could remove this uh, but let's go ahead and run this and and we'll print this new espn draft detail variable and here you see basically the same information it's just starting uh, with the draft detail and again kind of remove that initial uh, list brackets. And once again, we care about the draft pick information, which is now can be accessed directly via the draft detail and the picks. So let's go ahead and run this. And voila, we have just the pick information in this list of dictionaries. Uh, so that's the first pick. Uh, that's the, the second pick. Um, and again, it's kind of going to some information, the team ID, the overall pick number, the player ID, all information that we will expand upon later. And the last thing we're gonna do is take our draft picks, right, which has all of this information in this list of dictionaries, and turn it into a data frame by calling this PD data frame. We'll save it into the DF, and we'll take a sample of five rows there, and you'll see now all of that information nicely in a pandas data frame. Um, and as you recall, I mentioned earlier, we just care about the team ID, the player ID, and the overall pick number. So we're gonna go ahead and filter everything in the data frame, save it into a new draft.df. Let's get this new cleaned up data frame here. 
which again we're taking just five rows of a sample so it's from all over the data frame but we now have the overall pick number the player id and the team id which is great uh, but the player id is just a number doesn't mean much the team id just a number doesn't mean much so moving forward let's go ahead and get some more information which we can then join on to enhance this data frame so we have the draft details but what we want next is the player information so let's go back to the response and let's type in player to see what shows up here um, and great we have uh, these players scoring period which look uh, similar one is from the earlier 2021 call which you can see here and the other one is from the 2016 call which you can see here and if we go over into that preview uh, you have this long list of player information it looks like which includes the default position id eligible slots the first name last name the player id uh, the pro team id so this is all the information we need and again if we go into this response and we look at it this is what we're after to save into a nice data frame which we can then join on the player id and include a lot more of this information such as the position default position and the player name so from the header we can take the same request url and we're going to do the exact same thing we just did um, we're going to go ahead and pass it in we'll format out the just the season ID, you, you don't need the league ID because all of the players are the same across all of the leagues. Uh, but we can go ahead, save this into a URL, and uh, we will run this. And you'll notice here for the headers, I've created a new variable called custom headers, and uh, we're passing in a few bits of information to basically tell them not to filter the result. Now, in this call, uh, you'll look here, we, we came across some of these. Uh, X fantasy filters, X fantasy platform, X fantasy source. Now, if you don't include these headers, it's only going to return about 50 players. And we saw before, uh, there's a lot of players, uh, over 5,000 players, because it includes all of the defense of players, all the individual defenders for all the psychos out there that use a, a specific defensive player in fantasy. So what we're going to do is, in the header, include this information and basically tell uh, the, re the request to not filter anything right the, the same way it was showing all information there we don't want to filter so we'll save this into a new variable called the custom headers and when we pass that into the get request we'll say headers equal to custom headers okay so now we have our new url uh, again with the format the season id which right now the season id variable equals 2021 we have the cookies again passing those espn cookies because we are a private league and instead of headers we're going to pass in the custom headers and i have a customer header so that's going to cause issues Let's go here and call it custom headers. And now we're going to take this response, get all that JSON data and save it into a player data variable. Let's see what happens. Success. Let's run this. And here we have all of this nice uh, information. You'll notice we don't have to go in to get the draft details and the picks. This is already in a list of dictionaries. Uh, so it has everything we need. So we can just skip right ahead and save this player data into a new data frame and we'll take a sample of that and again um, all of the information here more information than we need so let's go ahead and um, filter it down to just the position id the full name the id which is the player id and we'll use that as a, a primary key to join on later and we want the pro team id right because maybe we also want to know what team they're part of i'm just taking a copy of this data frame so it doesn't throw off any warnings um, and then the last thing I'm going to do is rename the ID to be a player ID. And we're going to change that in place uh, equal to true, which is the in place parameter. I have some other posts that go into more detail on that. So let's run that and then take a sample five rows of our player DF. Fantastic. So we have people that I have never really heard of. I guess Cardell Jones was a QB, I believe. Maybe not. Um, but that's because these are probably a lot of defensive players deep on the rosters. Uh, but there you have it. We have the player info uh, now and the draft info so let's get the team info and really all we're doing is basically the same exact thing uh, but we have this different url which again is going to include the team information we'll just pass in the regular headers because there's only 30 uh, teams or is it 32 but regardless they won't filter anything down um, and we'll save this into a team data from the json response so we run this 
and you'll see here this has all of the the team information um, again the team has more than what we want so we want to go into the settings and the pro teams right uh, so we're gonna go into settings and we want to go into the pro teams and that's where we're going to get this list of dictionary information here you have the Indianapolis Colts uh, so let's save it out into this new team names variable uh, great so it's gone ahead and narrowed down the information we we're actually after and if we save this into a data frame and take a sample you'll see we have the abbreviation the bi week the ID the location the name and a lot more information we don't necessarily care about so again let's filter it down just to get the ID location and name um, we're going to actually just create a new column, call it team name, and we're going to concatenate uh, the location, which we have to call and, and make it a string, uh, and then the team name. So it's basically taking the location plus the name. Instead of having two columns, we'll have one column just be the Buffalo Bills or the San Francisco 49ers. And then we're going to rename the columns from ID to be team ID, so it's a little bit more descriptive, and we'll take a sample of this new team DF data frame. And voila, the team ID, the location, the name, and the team name. We could get rid of the location and name, but later on, we're only going to join and grab what we want there. Um, fantastic. Okay, moving right along, we are basically going to take everything we just did and turn it into some Python functions, uh, which for the most part is just going to take some inputs such as season ID, league ID, headers, and, and cookies, and it's going to return a data frame. And we want to do this because instead of creating a data frame for every season, I have 10 seasons of data, we want to make a function which will be able to use a for loop and, and go over it um, in a much more efficient way. So let's create a function for each of the draft details, the player info, and the team info. Um, and here we're going to just pass in the league ID and the season ID. Uh, again, we have that URL and whatever we pass in will be included in that string format uh, for the get request. We'll pass in the headers, uh, the cookies. Remember, we only need to pass in the regular headers for the details and the team info, but we need the custom headers for the player info. And everything we just did, uh, we're gonna kind of nest within this draft details functions. And lastly, we'll return uh, a draft DF data frame, um, which we can save out into uh, any data frame we want. So let's just run this. Uh, we're doing the same thing. And, and one thing to call out here is, right, you can do this if you want to take the new API v3 URL. I'm taking the historical one because we're going to go back to 2012. Um, same thing we just did here for the player info. We'll return a player DF. Uh, so let's just run that. And lastly, for the team info, uh, everything we just did, and we'll return a team DF. Okay. So we have all of this information, we have the functions ready. What we wanna do next is actually start to merge some of these data frames. So for, again, simplicity's sake, let's rerun some of this information. Um, this is my league ID, uh, this is the year we'll focus on. I have the ESPN cookies, the custom headers and the headers. Again, I haven't restarted this kernel, so these all would have been there already, but we can run it just to make sure. And here, what I'm going to do is actually try out these new functions of the get draft details, the get player info, and the get team info, and I'll save them all into um, these data frames. And again, I'm just passing in the league ID, the season ID. For the most part, um, the season ID you don't need for the players and the team, or sorry, the league IDs you don't need for the players and the team, just for your draft details. Uh, but let's run this and see what happens. Great. Looks like it was a success. So first thing we're going to do is merge the draft data frame and the player data frame. And we're going to do an inner uh, join. And the left on, which is basically the draft DF, we know has that player ID column. And the player ID column has that renamed uh, player ID column. So now we're going to join these, or sorry, the PD merge, the pandas merge, and then we'll take a sample of it. So let's get a look at this. Awesome. So now we have everything that was in the draft data frame. Now, we also have these additional columns of everything from the player data frame. Um, so we're making progress. We see we have two player ID columns, um, the team ID and the pro team ID. So what we want to do next is actually expand upon this pro team ID, and we'll merge uh, what we just created, this new DF2, uh, and we'll merge it with the team DF, again, using an inner join. And we'll go left on the pro team ID, which is this data frame, and the right on the team ID, which we have included in the team data frame. So now we go ahead, run that, and let's take a sample five rows. 
And now we have this new mega data frame that has all of the draft information, all of the player information, and all of the team information. Uh, making progress, but we can continue to clean this up a little bit. So first thing we see here is the default position ID. One, two, three, three, three. That doesn't mean much to us. We can kind of infer, okay, Michael Gallup is a wide receiver, Nick Chubb's a running back, Ryan Fitzpatrick is a quarterback. Um, but instead, let's do some position mapping where this one is to QB, the two is to RB, uh, five is to kicker, and 16 is to defensive special teams. These are all the positions we have in our league, and I'm taking the default position ID. Again, there are also additional pieces of information you can grab, such as any position they can be lined up on. That in, can include flex um, and offensive positions. So we're gonna take this position mapping dictionary, and now we're gonna take that final DF, uh, which is our current mega data frame, and we're gonna replace the default position ID with this new position mapping dictionary. Um, which is going to basically swap out all of those number integers for these strings with the actual positions, which are easier to read. And we'll save this into a new data frame. Again, I'm doing a lot of this, uh, these saving into new data frames, so you could always go back and make changes, uh, but you could also overlap. It's just, if you make a mistake, you got to go all the way back to the beginning. And so let's take a sample of this new league draft uh, data frame. Perfect. Now in the default position ID, I have uh, running back, QB wide receiver much better than the actual IDs themselves. Um, okay, next thing we want to do is the team ID, which is actually the fantasy team. So here we'll do the same thing. I'm creating this dictionary of league teams, and instead of ID team one, two, three, we'll replace it with team one, team two, team three, so on and so forth. You can swap in your own team's uh, names here. Same thing, replace the team ID with this league teams dictionary. It's going to go ahead and replace those numbers with the actual team names. And let's get this league draft info and take a sample of that. And now you see the team IDs, team 12, team 1, team 6, team 12, team 6. Perfect. Uh, and if you have actual names, you're going to see uh, those names there instead of these default placeholders. Moving right along, we will go and um, kind of touch up a few of the uh, other column names. So again, in this mega data frame, what I actually care about is the overall pick number, the team ID, the default position ID, the full name and the team name, only those five columns. Um, so let's run that. And within those columns, I'd wanna kind of modify some, some column names. Instead of overall pick number, we'll just call it pick. Instead of team ID, we'll call it Gibbs team. Gibbs is the, the name of my league. Default position ID, we'll just call it position, full name player, team name player team. We'll replace this in line, uh, sorry, in place. Uh, again, it's given us just a little bit of a warning. Okay, to ignore for now, for now. And if we run this, this is our final data frame. Again, for the 2021 year, we have George Kittle, who is on the 49ers. He's a position tight end, was drafted by team 12 on the 39th overall pick. Um, we have a lot of these other options. Uh, I drafted Leonard Fournette pick 110. He was a steal last year. Uh, I think that's why I made it to the finals. So here we have it again for one year, which is perfect. Uh, in the next section, we're going to loop over every year. So we have all historical draft data. Okay, next thing we want to do is create a for loop that will loop over every year and basically do what we just did, but append that information to the data frame. So we have this list of all of the years, again, from 2012, when our league started on ESPN, uh, all the way through 2021, which was last year. So let's run that list. And we're going to create an all drafts data frame, which will just be an empty data frame to start. And again, this is what we're going to append everything to. So we run that. Now, here we have our for loop, which, again, is basically just taking everything we've done and... Um, nesting it within this for year and years. We get our draft DF with our draft details function, our player DF with our get player info function, and team DF with the team info. Uh, we do all of the merging and the renaming there. And then lastly, you'll see here is in this final DF, we're going to create a new column. Um, we'll call it year, and we're going to pass in the year, uh, which we will convert uh, to a string. And basically, before we saw all of these picks and um, everything was 2021, so we didn't have to call that out. But when you start to get into multiple years, we actually are going to need that column so we can group by specific years and see trends over time. Um, and then after we have that uh, with the new column for year, 
we're going to append this league draft final into this all drafts data frame, which was this empty one we started up here. So let's run this and see what happens. And that's just a warning because I'm not using the dot loc, which I will change eventually. Uh, we did 2012, 13, all the way through. Now let's take a sample here. Aha. So we have the pick number, the team that drafted it, the position, the player, the player name, and now this new column with the year, which we see varies from 2021 all the way to 2012. Our sample here only has 2015. Uh, perfect. So this is the data frame that we want to export as a CSV. And luckily for us, Pandas gives us a really nice and easy two CSV um, you know, kind of method here. We'll pass in the CSV name and we don't care about the index. The index is going to tell us nothing. So we'll say that's false. So when we run this, whatever working directory you're within, you now have this data frame exported as a CSV file. And if you ever want to read in that CSV file, uh, you can run this uh, into a data frame with the read CSV, passing in the name. And there you can kind of bring it back in and do whatever you would like with it. Um, okay. So Let's jump over into Google Sheets now. All right, if you import in your CSV file um, into a Google Sheet, you should have all of your information again, 2012, 13, 14, 15, so on and so forth, with all of the information we need. And what we wanna do now is create uh, kind of this Sheets draft tool that is gonna tell us the number of player positions drafted, the count of each uh, position drafted by a certain pick. So this could help when you're preparing to get a sense, you know, of maybe some mock draft of, hey, if I'm picking at 44, how many QBs are going to be on the board? How many running backs? How many wide receivers? And so forth. So if you select all and you create a pivot table, uh, we'll do it into a new sheet. And you're going to have this pivot table editor. And let me move my head back over to the left. And first thing we want to do as far as rows, this is where we want the position. Um, so within each position, we're curious to know how many uh, were drafted over the years. And so that means over the years, we actually want uh, the column to be years. So this now goes from 2012 to 2021. We don't need uh, the totals um, for the years or for either there. And within the values, uh, what we actually want is the player. And within here, um, the count unique. And so what this is basically saying is, okay, in this draft, this was the total number of each position drafted, um, right? So uh, over the years, we'll see here, usually just 12 defenses and 12 kickers. Sometimes there's been a few more. Um, and then for QBs, we're a two QB league worth six touchdowns, uh, six points for each touchdown, which is why so many QBs get drafted. Uh, and then you have the running back, wide receiver, tight end, so forth and so on. And if we go down to filters, we're going to add in this pick um, and this status. We're going to go with a condition. So filter by condition where this is less than or equal to 44. And if we hit OK here, we'll see uh, by pick 44, how many QBs are drafted, running backs, tight ends, wide receivers um, over the years. And to make it more fun, we can create a new sheet, which we'll call ADP. And we'll have this input where right now we have the 44, but I could change it to say, what happens if I have pick 102? Um, and you'll see we can get this three-year average for each position drafted for the 102nd pick. And we'll also show it, show it in a chart format so it's a little bit easier uh, to consume. So to get this, um, this is in B4. And if we go over to our pivot table, let me move my head out of the way, click on the pivot table and move it back. All I did to change here was instead of having is less than or equal to in the conditional, we had a custom formula. And this custom formula, we're gonna say uh, pick is less than or equal to, and instead of giving it the number, we give it the, uh, the cell value, which is the ADP uh, B4 on that other sheet. So any change I make there will adjust it here in that custom formula. Um, so again, pick 102, if I go to pick 69, you see what changes. Uh, and then we could also look at the first round, you know, pick 12, what usually happens. And again, we're in a two QB league with six points per touchdown pass. Uh, to get the three-year average, you'll see we just have this 
Um, simple formula, taking the average over the last three columns, which will be 2021, 2020, and 2019, from that pivot table. And here we just have this be the position uh, value from the pivot table. Sometimes you don't have kickers and defensive players drafted by now. Whereas I look at the end of the draft, again, this is the three-year average for each of those positions over time. Uh, great. So there you have it, a fantasy draft tool to help position yourself to hopefully win your draft and win your fantasy football league. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Learn with Jabe. As always, you can follow the blog post for more details and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. Uh, I'm Jabe Jameson, signing off.